Let's do this. I am going to prepare um, steak tartare tonight. Up till now, I've just been eating raw steak, fish, all that kind of stuff. Um, I got Ajanis van der Planet's book, um, The Recipe for Living Without Disease, and he actually has lots of recipes in there, and he's a pioneer of the primal diet, which is a raw meat, raw animal product diet. Um, and he made a lot of really great recipes in order to help people who don't particularly want to eat raw meat to make this more palatable so that uh, we can handle it. So for starters, I'm in a dark kitchen here um, and I have headphones on because I have sleeping little kids about 25 feet away. Um, this is kind of how I feel though eating raw meat um, all the time now. It's like I'm kind of huddled in a dark corner, gnawing away on my raw meat. Um, it's just an experiment. I'm also experimenting with uh, one meal a day frequency of eating um, as well in order to get ripped. Um, so what I have here is called a bavette. Um, it was recommended, Ajanis von der Planets recommended a New York strip, um, but I got the bavette because it was grass-fed and they didn't have any grass-fed uh, New York strip. So um, all I have to do first is cut it into some some cubes and I've got everything else already mixed right here and then we're going to throw it into the food processor. I'm going to tell you what's in it and then I'm going to eat it. I've never tried steak tartare. Um, everything's raw. In these recipes he allows for like a couple things. They're not animal products like um, there's a little, two tablespoons of chopped red onion, some caraway seeds, that's really it. Oh, and a little horseradish, fresh, raw horseradish. Um, so I'm going to chop this up. I'm going to toss it all in the food processor. Um, and I'm kind of looking forward to, to giving it a whirl. You don't have to watch me cut the meat, but I don't know. I think there's something oddly cool about watching someone cut stuff with a really good knife which this is from Crooked River Forge I don't know if you're a Facebook friend Crooked River Forge Tommy but I'm using your knife a lot on my videos it's a pretty badass knife that Amanda got me for my last birthday my 42nd birthday 43 is coming up in November, and uh, I plan on, you know, by 45, I want to look like I'm 30. Cut, cut, cut. I'm going to cut it into cubes, and then I'm going to just toss it all into the, the food processor. The bavette, if you haven't had a bavette, the bavette cut of meat is in the flat steak family, and it is delicious. It's, it's in the same family of steak as the... Uh, skirt steak. It is an amazing steak. I think that's good, don't you? Should we try a piece? Let's try a piece. I mean, look at that. Just bloody, bloody red. My cat, he's, uh, you might be able to hear him. Let's give this a whirl. It's good. Well, that, it's about, mm, it's eight ounces that I'm putting in might be a little more we're gonna blend it for he says five to fifteen seconds I have three tablespoons of raw grass-fed butter in here one whole egg about two tablespoons of um, raw red onion a teaspoon of horseradish and a couple pinches of caraway and black pepper so here goes Get all that egg. Oh, and um, teaspoon of honey, teaspoon of raw unheated honey is also in there. So here goes. Hold on. I know I look like a d bag with the headphones on, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> I think it looks pretty good. It's 
So I'm going to scoop some out. I'm going to put it in this dish here. And I do plan on eating all of this because I haven't eaten all day and I'm hungry. We'll see how this bavette, what how it does as a steak tartare. It is pretty fatty, which is good. So um, I've been getting a lot of questions and comments lately about, you know, like, oh, it's so crazy to be eating raw meat. And my first response is like, well, do you eat sushi? And I was never even really into sushi. Um, but it's so funny that everyone is so <clears throat> fine. Everyone's good with sushi and sushi restaurants, which are essentially raw meat restaurants. Uh, but then we have a problem with like raw beef or raw lamb or the big one, raw chicken, um, which I have not eaten yet. But I have a buddy who wants me to eat some raw chicken on camera. Um, let's give this a try. This is the uh, steak tartare with the bavette steak. Very good, right away. Really, really good. It's much more palatable than just cutting the raw steak and eating it. The palatability is something that um, enables us to eat a lot of the foods that we think we like or the foods that we crave. We like them so much because they're so palatable. Um, raw meat is not really super duper palatable, um, which has its pros and cons. Um, we're not used to it, which is that makes it unpalatable. <clears throat> Um, but anyhow, it's so nutrient dense that even after a full day of fasting, I haven't eaten for like 23 hours. This plus I'm going to have a shake of just my raw milk and a couple eggs and some raw honey. That will probably do it for me. It's pretty crazy. Um, so, you know, why raw meat and am I afraid of bacteria or parasites? Everyone's like, ooh, I'm getting comments like, Oh, you know, let us know how you do with all your parasites and your bacteria. And what people don't realize is we are bacteria. We're 90% bacteria. We're 90% bacteria, 10% um, human. So we're literally a shell for bacteria, according to Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. We're a shell for bacteria, and um, all bacteria, this is from Ogenous Wonder Planets, all bacteria when it's in our body, all bacteria in our body is good bacteria. There is no good and bad bacteria. <clears throat> it all serves a purpose. Um, and the bacteria or germ theory of disease is just that. It's a theory. Like, do we get sick from ingesting bacteria in our food? Well, no. All these animals were also 90% bacteria. Um, so this is alive right now. This meat didn't die when it got cut off of the animal. It will die if and when it gets heated um, or cooked, and it becomes a dead food. So it's alive right now. It's got its own living microbiome, which when I ingest it will become part of my living microbiome. But it will all, all those microbes in this food are also going to help me um, pre-digest it, digest it, absorb it, assimilate it, help it to become part of my body. Um, by the way, that first bite was really, really good. Uh, wow, great recipe. Mm. I'll put the recipe um, below this video so that you guys can, I would love other people to give this a try. This is steak tartare, man. You know, um, there's no salt. I bet in a restaurant they would put a lot of salt in it. Um, but it's super good. The onions and the horseradish really help make it more palatable so you know what else any questions that you might have um, about this the carnivore diet the raw carnivore diet <clears throat> one meal a day which is abbreviated as OMAD um, yeah um, zero carb by the way zero carb carnivore diet that's what that's what um, what this is with the one meal a day so you know the goal is fountain of youth um, ultimate health disease prevention, curing. I have all my own issues, you know, um, that I can start to slowly see going away. Um, some skin things that I've had for a long time that I don't like that flare up when I eat a lot of um, grains and alcohol and stuff like that. So, you know, less than a decade ago, I was a strict vegetarian. 
I was doing it for what I thought were health reasons. Um, I'm going to be, you know, super healthy because I'm not going to eat meat, which is like such brainwashing. It's ridiculous. We're all pretty brainwashed. Nutrition is the biggest conspiracy out there. Human nutrition is the biggest conspiracy. I can safely say we're the only animal on the planet that doesn't know how to eat. That there's a debate about how we're supposed to eat. Are we vegetarian? Are we herbivores? Are we carnivores? Are we omnivores? <clears throat> I'm not sure there is such a thing as an omnivore, though. Because, you know, the real definition of a carnivore is any animal where 20% of its diet or more is meat. That would make all carnivores omnivores. Anyhow, I digress. Where was I? I was a vegetarian less than a decade ago. I did it for health reasons. I did it for what a lot of vegans and vegetarians will call ethical, moral reasons. Hmm. Which makes us the only animal on the planet also that makes eat nutrition or eating decisions or, you know, um health and longevity decisions based on uh, ethics and morals, which are just man-made constructs that um, not everyone really agrees on anyways. But that being said, feelings and ethics and morals really, you know, don't have anything to do with nutrition in the way that we're actually supposed to eat. Now, I'm totally opposed to industrial farming, factory farming. Um, I learned a lot about that in my vegetarian days, um, but uh, which is why I support... Um, Family farms, I support the raising and nurturing of grass-fed animals, naturally raised animals, um, which I believe has a bigger impact on making the world a better place than your average, you know, vegan or veganism. Um, because, you know, us, the carnivores are supporting the family farmers and we're supporting, you know, we're using our money and our mouths big time our mouths to make the world a better place. We're not buying processed junk food and pretending that it's healthy. Um, so the real, the real, you know, uh, what's the word? The real explorers of nutritional, human nutritional science out there today are the people who are experimenting with their own bodies. And I've been doing this for a long time. And now I'm following other people who are doing it. Um, I don't know if I would have stumbled upon, you know, the true nature of humanity, the obligate carnivore. I don't know if I would have stumbled upon it if I wasn't constantly looking, constantly searching um, for answers, you know, about all these, these things, our health and nutrition, longevity, disease prevention, disease curing. Um, so let me know what you think about all this. Uh, let me know if you're going to try this Agenis van der Planet's recipe of steak tartare, which I highly recommend. Let me know if you think what I'm saying is absolute craziness. Um, ah, any questions you might have? I'm just looking for some banter. I'm looking for some conversation. Not political conversation. Although if you start talking a lot about veganism, it could get political, I don't know. Socio-political. Um, but those could all be good conversations and good debates. So I look forward to hearing what any of you have to say. And maybe next time I won't have to wear headphones and be in the dark. Um, but that is the way that it is when you're a dad. Primal Dad. That's who I am on YouTube. Uh, this video will be there, and I have some other ones up there as well. The Primal Dad. Talk to you soon.